Who has a question? Does anybody have a question? Anyone want to hear something again? Or these? Yeah, Lena. Um, okay, we've been playing together roughly four plus years, something like four plus years. Soli, what do you want to say? I'm their daughter, and I'm 44 years old. I've been playing cello for 33 years, so I've been playing with them for about 33 years. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't, it's not about perfection, you know, it's more about the expression of the music, not the perfection of it. So a lot of our rehearsals don't, we're all busy, we all have lives, we all do different things, including my teaching at the college. We get together when we can. We're lucky to get together once a week. Twice a month, fantastic. So, you know, it's not like tip top, like a professional orchestra, but that's okay, because you don't want to over practice either. You sort of want to bring your mood to the show. You want to be in a, oh, I'm not in a great mood today, but I'll do the best I can, you know, type of thing. Good question. Anybody else have a, yeah, John? Have you gone to play places before? Yeah, like we did this tasting room in Hood River last week. We did a winery. I personally love playing in places like wineries, outdoors, fantastic. And this music, there was no technology. If you go back 100 years, there was no microphone then. So you just had to have a loud instrument, face it, you know, you would, even the singer. Um, uh, we'll be doing a couple of more formal uh, shows in Odell in January, I believe. I don't know if I've told the band yet, but we're invited to do that with the, I think it's the, the, the yeah, the Hood River uh, Jazz, what do they call it, the Jazz Club or something in Hood River. Uh, and I want to arrange a piece for a jazz band and the Klezmers. This is going to be amazing. Like you have like 20 people Steigers, playing. Jazz group. Yeah, the jazz group with, with Mr. Steigner from, if anybody knows the Hood River guys. Yeah. Will that be on the weekend? Um, I'll, I'll tell you, you're in my class. I know it's two dates in January, and I'm thinking it's middle mid-January up in Odell at Y East. That auditorium is fantastic. It's a really neat auditorium. So any question? how about for one of the instrumentalists? You should ask. Uh, Sherry, our violinist, was in the Spokane Symphony also, yeah. So, okay, so this, the violin looking instrument, it's not a violin, it's a fiddle? <laughs> so I've been calling it a violin. See, now you've gone and done it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, a fiddle and a violin are pretty much the same, but it's the style that you play. So I was trained as a classical violinist and I've played in like string quartets and orchestras all my professional life. And um, so, I don't know, maybe this is more fiddly. Uh, Different variations of fiddle, like bluegrass, um, definitely fiddle, more twangy, more, they say that the difference between a violin and a fiddle is that a violin has strings and a fiddle has strings. Can you, uh, <laughs> Sherry, can you, put, to put you on the spot, can you play us the difference between a fiddle and a violin? Sure. We're all listening. Okay, let's see. Um, violin. <laughs>
space. Yeah, and it's not our, it's, it doesn't occupy everything that we do. Um, I have never been asked that question. People enjoy it, but it's really interesting because I have to sort of go to, to my personal history. Um, I, uh, my father was born in Russia, in, in Western Russia, but it was between Russia and Poland, both places which have this kind of music, klezmer music, and he was kind of a refugee between the two world wars um, during a time of persecution of the Jews in, in Russia. So his family, first they crossed the border to Poland. They could not get um, a passport from Russia to, the, to New York, let's say to the New World. But they could go to Poland and live there for a year and in residence, take up occupations, and that would get them a passport to New York. This is a long answer, but it won't be much longer. And so that got him finally, there were seven siblings and they went over in different waves and he finally got to New York. And that, and they brought the language, the Russian language with them. They grew up in villages where they sang songs that were very similar to this. So the first music I would have heard as a child would have been this music, a lullaby, you know, klezmer kind of lullaby. So. I don't know if that answers the question, but in all my life I did classical music and classical training, piano and so on. Interested in guitar and interested in gypsy music. And this is sort of like a treat to myself uh, in my retirement, so to speak, to play this music again. And picking up the accordion only like four or five years ago also. So I'm struggling with it, but it's coming along. Good question. I always played jazz and rock and roll and, you know, Friday, Saturday night bands in the bar and, and I went and played a concert with my sister for my mom when she was in an assisted living home and after the concert was over, this nice little Jewish lady comes up to me and she says, what are we, chop liver? You got no Jewish Christmas carols. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had heard of this kind of music called klezmer, so I sort of, you know, it was I don't know if you could Google then or not, but at any rate, I sort of looked it up and found it. And when I started listening to it and playing it and becoming aware of it, it really just completely changed the way I played in the bar band on Saturday night. <laughs> I have a question for Michael over there. Are you taping us? Yeah. You realize that he's taping this, and we may get a YouTube out of this. <laughs> I love your questions. Don't you like their questions are wonderful. I love the answers. Anybody else want? Antonia, what brought you to Klesmer? You. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be handsomely paid for that. I, I had a, a career as a flamenco dancer. I toured the world with a great company from Spain. Um, and we use this, which is called a cajon. We use this to teach the rhythms because in flamenco dance, which is, if you've seen any of it, it's the, the feet make all these rhythms. But also, it comes from a tradition of the Hebraic. It comes from when the Moors dominated Spain for 800 years, and the Ladino language, and the Gypsy language, Kalo. So they don't count. You don't count anything. So in Western culture, we learn to dance. It's, one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six. Well, they don't do any of that. And in fact, if they have to count, all the rhythms are in 12 counts, but they'll only count 10, one, two. You won't count to 12. 10, one, two. But they don't like the count, so they teach it by going, di, da, ka, da, ka, di, da, ka, da, ka, da. That's how you learn it. Di, da, da, That's how you learn it. Di, da, da, da. Or what's that? Di, da, da, da. So after a while, they started using this, the teacher, this is what you do, and the students do it. So that's, um, that's where I came to this. And then I was just kind of sitting in and playing with them, because um, in Klezmer, any instrument's OK. You can come in. Doesn't have, you know, it's not a rule. So I started playing this with them. But these are much more simple rhythms than flamenco rhythms, much more simple. Do you have the castanets with you tonight? Yeah. One of the main instruments that we also use, we didn't program it tonight, are the castanets. Left hand is lower voice, keeps the rhythm, like a metal. Right hand is louder. Like this.
Any questions about these? Yeah. <laughs> you have a target way of it. <laughs> this is a, a vanishing art. Uh, I don't. I don't want to quite go as far as to say an endangered species. Maybe a threatened species. You know, on the, because people don't want to go through the technique. A lot of dancers don't want to bother to learn the technique of the castanets. It's a little bit complicated, and they have enough to do. They're worried about their feet and their arms and their costumes, and now you have to wear these castanets and play them like a musical instrument while you're doing all this fancy choreography. So um, isn't that true? It's kind of dying out. And days. then you can have a partner who's also playing, and you can have a shawl and a dress with a long tail, and it's multitasking for sure. <laughs> but castanets are not hard to learn. And you can carry them in your pocket. And I think you should all learn how to play as <laughs> and play with whatever music you like. It doesn't have to be just with European or gypsy music. I mean, it's fun. I've never heard castanets with pleasure music before. You came along with it just in such music, a perfect, yeah. you know? Yeah. So because of this scratch idea, you know, that we have the recipe, whatever's handy, we have the castanets now. And we've expanded from this percussion. We've used, well, we used the tambourine. Didn't we use a washboard on something? <laughs> and she uses an egg. <laughs> oh, we had that little shaker to this, yeah. So my question is, how, you, like, how did you discover your talent singing with her oh. in Latin? Um, so I just always wanted to be a singer. And I studied piano. And then I just, as I, when I got in my 20s, I just started taking some lessons took some lessons for a few years and stopped. And I always sang in choirs. Um, so I always sang classical and I trained with um, opera teachers. But I loved Spanish music, I just always have. I've got all sorts of CDs with different, different genres of, or different kinds of Spanish influence. Anyways, um, I was singing at a teacher's event, a Spanish piece, a classical, and Joel just was like, oh, would you like to sing some more Spanish music? And I'd, I'd love it. And so since I've sang the Italian and the opera, reading, I don't actually speak Spanish or Ladino, but I can, you know, I can read it, read it. And so I can sing it. And then I can always translate so I know what I'm singing. <laughs> that's very important. <laughs> so that's kind of, it's just been a long path. I've, and I've gone to different teachers. Actually, I went to a teacher just a few years ago to get some more training. So I just kind of keep coming in. I've learned a lot here. So just always keep learning. That's best part of life. Having a teacher doesn't necessarily mean you have to go like on a weekly basis and have the weekly lesson and stuff. It means like, you know, you, you meet somebody, you find somebody, well go take a lesson and learn what you can from them. And most musicians like that, you know, will, will teach and, you know, for, for money they'll give you an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and probably a lot, of, a lot of knowledge. Okay, so we have a little break now and we'll put our instruments away and everybody hang out. We're going to stay in this room and do what we do.